Hi everyone! This Canvas 4 model home located in our Belterra community is for sale and features four bedrooms, one of which can be utilized as a home office or a private gym, three full bathrooms, and a two-car garage. Let's go take a look! Uh, clapping was for a reason. It's so that I could synchronize the micro uh, the camera to the actual audio because they're being recorded separately. What happens is on the video, you see me clap. In the audio, you, you see the spike in the audio. That's how you align it up so that the audio isn't out of sync. That's exactly what that clapper board is for, which people call slate. That's why they slap it in movies, is to synchronize the audio and video because they're recorded separately. Because camera microphones are not very good. Hey everyone, my name is Murray. Welcome to the video. Like you saw in the beginning, you're going to learn how to track text into your shots using the 3D camera tracker in After Effects. You're not using a point tracker where you actually track one point on the video. You're actually tracking the whole scene and solving the camera so that you actually have a 3D scene. It's very useful and it actually can be done pretty quick and you have very, very good results. Remember, if you don't actually want to do this yourself, let's say you're just not proficient enough with After Effects or you're just simply lazy like me, go to fiverr.com, use the link down below and you can actually use the coupon MFROST15 at checkout for the first 200 of you uh, for your first purchase and you can get 15% off. Go use that link down below. And also remember, if you want to learn how to shoot real estate videos from start to finish, how to edit it, shoot it, distribute it, all that kind of stuff, Consider sticking around by subscribing because I am going to be setting out a, a tutorial on that in the near future. But yeah, without further ado, let's check it out. All right, so here we are in Premiere Pro. I'm going to assume that you're starting in Premiere Pro, but if not, that's totally fine. Just open After Effects and drag in your footage. But assuming you're starting in Premiere Pro, this is the sequence we have. Hi everyone, this Canvas 4 model home located in our Belterra community is for sale and features four bedrooms, one of which can be utilized as a home office or a private gym. Three and so obviously you can notice that the title is tracked in pretty well. Let's start out a new composition here just so that I can start from scratch and I can show you step by step. So with my new sequence created, I'm just gonna drag in the footage. It makes it easier when your camera move is nice and smooth. Uh, you can have a more shaky camera and still get a pretty good track. It just depends on a lot of different factors, which I'm not going to go into. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on our sequence and we're going to do replace with After Effects composition because After Effects is already open. It's opened up really quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to first track it. So select your footage, go to the tracker here. If it doesn't appear, we're going to go to window and we can just always go down to tracker and it's checked over there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to track camera because I wanted to analyze the video footage and create a camera in my scene or grab data in order to allow me to create a camera. So once this finishes, keep in mind if your track doesn't do very well because let's say the camera is very shaky or for whatever reason, you can go down to the advanced and you can do detailed analysis. Now keep in mind it'll have to reanalyze the footage assuming it's completely analyzed it. So you'll have to give it a chance to redo that and it would probably take longer as well because it's doing a more detailed analysis. And once it's finished tracking it's going to solve the camera. Alright so it's completely finished tracking and it's also solved the camera so you can see all these dots on the screen here. I can also increase the target size and the size of the tracker points. So you can see now the target is actually bigger. If I increase this even more, it'll even be a bigger target. It'll just show you what kind of plane it's looking at. So for example, right here, uh, actually right here, you can see that the plane is in line with the wall or the outside of the house. So you know, if you want to, let's say, put text on the wall, we would use this target over here because it's aligned with the wall. It's parallel with it. So what we're going to do, obviously we want to do it at the garage because that's what we're working with here. And uh, I'm just going to keep searching, which you can also do. Actually, this spot is, let's say I wanted to put it on the, the tile here or the, the driveway. I would use this target because it's aligned with the, the driveway. But what I can do is I can drag and select. And actually, I'm surprised I got that the first time. It looks like this target is in line with the the garage door even this one let's try this again and see 
No, that didn't work. Let's try that again. There we go. That looks like it worked out really well. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to create a null in camera. What it's done is it's created a null or essentially a placeholder so that you can see what's going on. So with it selected, if I scrub down, you can see it's tracked in the scene. It's not going to look that great because it needs to do a RAM preview. So once I do that and then I can scrub through it, you can see it's tracked really well. It's also got the rotation, position and scale so that it's actually out of the scene. There's, uh, there's some parallax, as you can see, with the pole here and the house behind it that the pole is actually moving uh, and it's closer to the camera in Z space. So what we're going to do, let's go ahead and drag in our sequence here. This is the title for the garage door. If you want this title, I'll go ahead and include it in the Discord server. Link down below. It's going to be in the channel free stuff. So that's pretty cool. This is free. You can just download it from the Discord. I'll put that download there. But essentially it's just text moved into the screen and it's got some easy ease keyframes here so if you wanted to recreate it yourself you can but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to right click on this and i'm going to do reveal composition in project there's that composition that i'm working with so if i go back to my main comp i'll just drag that in and i'm going to put it on top of my video footage you can see that it is pretty big so what we're going to do is we're going to turn it into a 3d layer because right now we have a 3D camera set up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to view. I'm going to do two views horizontal. So one from the top view and one from the active camera. You can see that labeled up on the top left here. So you can see I've got the 3D camera selected here. If I just zoom in, you can see what the camera is actually doing here. It's mimicking the whole movement of the actual camera that I shot with at the home actually pretty cool you can watch this all day so then you can also see here if i zoom out you can see the null object over here right so you can see how far it is in z space in order for it to be tracked into the scene so what i have to do is with my price details selected i'm going to actually drag it back into z space as you can see with it selected this is price details right over here so i'm gonna have to push it back you can see it appears in the active camera what i have to do is i'm going to take it all the way in line with the null object here so if I just zoom in i'm going to make sure that it's on pretty much the same plane right next to each other because that way i know i'm getting a, a clean and accurate track all right so once i've got it roughly in the same position there it's going to be mimicking the same movement because the null object is a 3d object and the price details is also a 3D object. So now they're both in the same part of the scene. So if I just go to my views here and go back to one view, it'll go back to my active camera. And with it selected, I'm gonna just zoom in here real quick. With it selected, I can just scale it up. And uh, I say around about there is good. And I'm actually gonna drag the whole layer. I'm gonna undo that just to show you what's going on here. A lot of people might want to actually move it with the X, Y, and Z parameters. You don't really want to do that because you've already got it in the same plane you want it in. So I'm actually going to drag its position properties, not the X, Y, and Z properties, because it has two. You select the layer, you move it like this, and you've also got the X, Y, and Z parameters moving it in Z space. I don't want to do that part because I've already moved it to where I need it to be. So I'm just going to reposition it here. Then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to press with the layer selected in my timeline, press R on the keyboard. It brings up my orientation and rotation on all three axes. Then what I can do is I'm just going to rotate it just so that it aligns with the garage door. So let's say about that and then we'll just rotate it a little up and down just to make sure it aligns with the garage door. And what I'm doing is I can hold control and it actually adjusts these parameters a little more refined or slowly instead of it being so fast and sometimes you might go past what you want. I hold control, it slows down the amount at which it changes or the speed at which it changes so i'm just gonna fine tune this a bit and that's starting to look pretty good obviously i can scale it up but let's say i'm happy with that right now and if i just press a zero on my numeric keyboard it's going to do a ram preview and actually it's not going to be too bad because i have a pretty powerful computer and it's not that visual effects intensive but you can see with very little work it's actually tracked this looks actually really perfect i don't even know if i'm going to have to do i know you can see there it's starting to drift a little all right so before it was perfect right on the line now it's actually drifting a little it happens just because that's that's part of the the scene it's also this part of the wall is slightly 
extruded from the actual garage door. So if I just go back here, you can see there's that amount of a difference and it actually makes a difference. So you can see that that's actually just in front of the pillar there, which is not an issue because what we can do, we can either use masking, which is a little unnecessary to be honest, but you can definitely mask out that part of the title. What I'm gonna do, which is easier, is I'm gonna select this price details layer. I'm gonna press P on the keyboard, it brings up my position. I'm gonna to go to where it starts to kind of drift away, which is round about here. I'm gonna create a keyframe there by pressing the stopwatch. I'm gonna go all the way to where the title is last seen, which is right about there. I'm just gonna move it. I'm holding shift to keep it on the same axis here so that it doesn't go up and down. I just wanted to do it on one axis, which is the Z axis here. But I'm not actually gonna adjust the Z axis. I don't wanna do that. I'm just gonna hold shift and drag it just to the corner of that. And then let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's starting to look really good. And then obviously the pole is in front of the title here, which I'll mask that. I'll do that in just a second here. Let's take a look and see how this looks. This is very minimal work here. You can see it's been really easy and super fast. And it literally looks like it's part of the scene, which is obviously what you want. It looks super good. All right, so as for the masking, I'm just gonna duplicate my background layer, drag it on top of the price details layer. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom in here, go to where the flagpole you know, overlaps the garage here, because that's where the title is gonna be. I'm gonna start here. Do Control Shift D or Command Shift D on a Mac. Delete that first layer. And I'm gonna go down where the title ends. I'm just gonna grab the opacity and drag it down so I can see what's going on underneath up until the title is gone, which is there. The Command Shift D, I'm gonna delete the end part of that and I'm gonna bring the opacity back all the way up. So the reason why is because this part of the sequence here is when the pole is overlapping the text. So what I'm gonna do is press a G on the keyboard, which is my mask tool. I'm going to create a mask around this pole. I'm gonna be as accurate as I can because it is going to matter. Then what I'm gonna do is in my tracker tab here, I'm going to track forward because I can actually track the mask over here. And actually it's kind of gone off, which is not good. So let's undo that with Control or Command Z. I'm going to go to the mask properties here and I'm going to do my keyframe the mask path. Then I'm gonna to go to the end of the layer here with page up and page down. I can go to the last frame of this layer. And what I can do is I can just double click the mask and just drag it over to the flagpole and I can use my arrow keys to fine tune that. Looks good, I don't have to do much because it's already looking pretty good. It's a little bit of refining. And then I'm just gonna go halfway and just make sure it's pretty accurate, which actually is off. So I'm just gonna use the arrow keys to fine tune that. And just a couple more keyframes. The reason why I don't do it frame by frame is because it's gonna take unnecessary time. It's not, not needed. You don't have to worry about doing every single frame. Plus, it'll look a little choppy if you do every single frame. So this will save a lot of time. So let's go back to the first frame here and let's drag that back up to Blackpool. All right. So if I just go frame by frame using page up and page down, on Mac it's command up arrow key or command down arrow key as far as I remember. And I'm just gonna make sure that it's relatively in where I want it to be. You can see some of the edges are cut off. We'll fix that in just a second. I'm just gonna make sure that this is where it should be, which it looks like it's getting off track a little here. I'm just gonna shift it over a little bit with the arrow keys. All right, and let's go up to end here. All right, that's looking good. So let's go back up to where we see that the title overlapped here. What we're gonna do is with the mask expansion, I'm just gonna expand it very slightly. It looks like 0.6 does the trick because if I just undo that, you can see that the mask is cutting text a little bit. You can see there's like a, an overlap over here. It's just very tiny and it's very noticeable to on large screens. So I just expanded that mask by 0.6. And then what I can do is change the feather to, let's say three. Let's see what that looks like. That's too much. But that looks pretty good. I'm also going to include a full tutorial on how to do real estate videos coming up in the very near future. If you wanna know how to actually make a real estate video advertising a home, consider subscribing, stick around for the future. It's not gonna be far away. It'll be coming out in the next couple of weeks. 
Actually, I think this is even better than when, when the actual video was created. Amazing what you can do with After Effects. So yeah. And there you have it. Pretty simple and easy. Also, it can be pretty quick. If you guys enjoyed, stick around for the future by subscribing. A lot more content coming up. After Effects, filmmaking, tutorials, streaming, all that kind of fun jazz. There are a lot of free downloads on the website. Go to murrayffilms.com shop. Link down below. You can use the coupon free at checkout for about 90 to 95% of the stuff on the shop. So that's also cool. And also I appreciate the support. But until next time, remember, keep smiling, keep shooting.